All right. Good morning, uh, Serge. Hope you can hear me. Hi, Andy. Um, so welcome everyone. Good morning. Good uh, good evening once again, uh, and welcome to welcome to join Cloudberry and Backblaze webinar. We you guys are going to learn more about how you can leverage Cloudberry and Backblaze and provide your organizations with cost-effective online backup solutions. My name is Serge. Uh, I'm partner manager here with Cloudberry Lab. And co-hosting today with me is uh, Andrew Klein. Hi, Andy. Good, actually, it's good afternoon, Serge. How are you? Always good. Thanks, Andy. Um, and Andy is, uh, is part of uh, Backblaze team. He will get back to us uh, when we uh, get to Backblaze storage. Uh, for now, let's start with what is that? What is Backblaze? What is Cloudberry? And why we're all gathered here? During the webinar, please feel free to uh, shoot us your questions in question, um, question window in your control panel. If there is a question window, please feel free. And Eugene Rudinsky, our solution architect, will be happy to provide answers in the background. So we, uh, Eugene today is our third, third host of this webinar, and he will be responding to your questions. Um, all right, so it's been more than three months already, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, since we successfully started our partnership and our integration uh, into each other's products. Um, Cloudberry, in fact, well, it, it, it was sort of trial period for us, uh, probation if you want, uh, and it's been really successful. It proved to be really successful. Customer love it, and we expect to do more. So for almost a year, our customers, Cloudberry's customers, have been asking us, have been requesting to add to our storage agnostic solutions to our portfolio of storage types we provide, uh, we support Backblaze. And we finally gave up and did that. We have a conversation, we had a conversation with Backblaze team, our team got together, uh, we put our heads together, and finally, on June 28th, we finally released first uh, version of Cloudberry backup tool that supported uh, Backblaze as a storage destination. So today, by October, we are happy to have all platforms covered, Windows, Linux, Linux, all, almost all distros of Linux, Mac um, that are fully integrated with Backblaze B2 storage. So that means that customers may, uh, that customers can leverage really cost-effective, really cost-effective storage of Backblaze. Andrew, uh, Andy will have a chance to uh, talk about this more. So. Cloudberry has been on the market for almost a decade now, and it was our belief, it was our uh, strategy right from the beginning not to sell, not to sell storage, uh, as opposed to other uh, backup vendors. And customers ask us, "Hey guys, how much your cost uh, storage is? Uh, how much do I pay for your storage?" None, because we do not sell storage. We are fully storage agnostic solution, and Cloudberry's customers uh, may take advantage of it, bring their own uh, cloud providers, their cloud storage, and use it with Cloudberry. They can even use you can guys even use your uh, own storage if it's uh, if it's uh, based if it's built on OpenStack uh, technology. Uh, S3 compatible or even your local NAS devices. However, on the other hand, you don't need to do anything. You don't need to make any initial investments and just start using Backblaze. Backblaze doesn't require any initial investments. There is no upfront payment. You pay as you go, you pay as you use. You start 
with low cost possible and you continue using pain just half penny per gig and, and again and you will cover that so cloudberry has been successful in in developing great backup tools and now we have an integrator with one of the most affordable one of the most cost-effective storage types that there is on the market and we are proud of it um, right uh, with that said with that said uh, let me let me describe briefly what exactly is that uh, what we're discussing today what we're talking about so Backblaze is a raw storage that allows you to store your data for any term, uh, long-term uh, retention, any term. Um, and using Cloudberry, you can directly upload your data to Backblaze. You can set up automation. You can set up um, retention policy. You can, and you don't need to use any local appliances. Everything goes directly and on the fly to Backblaze. You encrypt your data if you want to using one of 18, 18 algorithms of encryption. And I don't, and I doubt, honestly doubt that there is any other cloud backup provider on the market who does provide that many of um, of um, encryption algorithms algorithms and uh, compression you can also apply compression and compress your data before it hits backblaze on the fly it's not all about file level backup I must be many businesses uh, in addition to file and folder level backup, their data backup also require backup, their SQL servers, S uh, many organizations still have uh, exchange uh, server boxes that they want to uh, backup online off-prem. You can do that with Cloudberry tools. Um, of course, if you're an enterprise company, you can build your own data center and use on-prem backup, but if you are small or even mid-sized business, you don't want to invest that amount of money into building your own backup infrastructure. You can use, you would, I'm pretty sure guys you want to use something really cost effective start right now. Be sure that your data is securely backed up, that you can always restore it with uh, less expensive and make it as less expensive as possible at the end of the day. So this is this is what we uh, did together with with Backblaze. So if you have a sophisticated even infrastructure mix of virtual environment, physical environment with uh, legacy exchange boxes or uh, some uh, VMware stations, you can use uh, Backblaze, uh, Cloudberry tools together with Backblaze and when the bad time comes, you easily restore it. And let's be honest, right, Backblaze it's not the only, uh, it's not the only uh, storage, uh, cloud storage on the market and I actually discussed it with Andy if you would be comfortable uh, that I would mention that there are actually other storage providers on the market and and he said yes sure uh, this is the life and uh, we are completely understand what niche we carved and this is the niche of storage there are Amazon Web Services uh, and Microsoft Azure and actually uh, our customers can leverage even those together in conjunction with Backblaze because it's one thing; it is one thing to store your data at low cost rates, and another thing to provide your organization with advanced uh, disaster recovery options with business continuity. So you can store your data for long term uh, at really cost effective rates with Backblaze, and when that hurricane strikes or what happens on Pacific. Uh, earthquake, uh, God forbid, but if, if anything happened, you can easily restore your entire servers on Amazon or Azure from, from Backblaze. So this is the solution that 
Cloudberry uh, provides, uh, and we get back on that shortly. So when we talk about Windows Backup, it's really fascinating what you can do. You can move your entire servers on the cloud. You can back them up. You can uh, back, uh, back your SQL or Exchange uh, servers. We also support uh, Linux, and we do support it with Backblaze as well. So there are many uh, uh, websites that are um, that are built, and the servers for these sites are Linux-based. So of course, you would want to back up your Linux server uh, and store your data long term for really cost-effective rates. So feel free to use this, feel free to consider that for your, for your business. Uh, at the end of the day, it's all about uh, how well we sleep at night and with Backblaze you can be sure that the data, your data is securely stored and with Cloudberry tools you are sure that your data is automatically black up that uh, the same night then you really want it and the data is securely protected and encrypted so no one else will pick that and get an access to this data. And if you have a really sophisticated environment with multiple server, multiple server environment, multi-tenant environment, um, we can provide you with uh, remote management tools uh, remote and centralized uh, management tools for all your machines. Even if you have a mix of uh, Windows and Linux and some of your employees use um, Mac devices, you can use our remote control uh, that is called a managed backup service and easily integrated with uh, Backblaze for uh, cost-effective storing and you, you're good to go. It is a really good solution for managed service providers if you are an IT contractor, if you are a service provider. Um, you would know that it's really important how much do you pay uh, for storage. It's, it's, it, it works really simple uh, Cloudberry uh, server, in this case, works as a middleware between your Backblaze storage and your customers or your endpoints. I mean, it, it, it actually is irrelevant. irrelevant. It's, it can be used for internal uh, backup uh, multi-server environment. In this case, you orchestrate everything via one centralized control panel. All data transfer goes still directly between your server or desktop to Backblaze storage. And Cloudberry is only used, uh, Cloudberry server is only used for authentication, authorization, and orchestration of your backups. So it's like a middleware in this case, and Cloudberry still keeps uh, what we believe in. We do not store customers' data, never. All right, uh, I think it will be just easier for all of us if I just showed you something, a couple of things, how you can easily set your backups to Backblaze with Cloudberry uh, tools. And let's take a, a look at that. So first of all, this is how our software looks like. Uh, if you guys are familiar with Cloudberry uh, server backup or desktop backup or our Ultimate Edition, they look pretty much the same. They're each resemble, resemble each other. So first we need to set up our Backblaze storage. Uh, and we just click here, add new account. We select Backblaze and provide the credentials that Andy will talk about a bit later. And that's it, we specify a bucket and we have now an account, like in my case, I have already an account that we can now set up a backup to send our data to that to that storage. So we set up a backup plan and you can see we can set up a backup plan for SQL or Exchange Server. It's really easy. We can even do in full image level backup for our server. 
we can back up entire server and then replicate that server when the bad time comes. I'm not going to guide you through all the steps, but the idea is quite simple. So we select our storage, uh, we provide the additional settings that we want to use for um, if we have if we have uh, files that may be open or may be um, in, in access by another application during the job, we can enable VSS, for example. It's really straightforward at the same time, quite intuitive. You can apply advanced filters if you don't want certain files to be backed up. Uh, you can um, adjust that filter by file age, by file size. If you don't want to back up your system or hidden files, you can also do that. You can enable in compression or encryption. I'm not going to proceed and um, think it will just easier for you guys to go on our website and download your trial from here. And here, let me stop and show you what if you have a multi-tenant environment and show you a Cloudberry managed backup solution. And this is how it looks like. So instead of, instead of using an agent, we would use this uh, control panel. You can see many servers and desktops in my backup network here. So I can just select that particular computer here and set up a backup job for that server remotely from any place uh, where th there is internet connection. Um, and instead of using the agent interface, I will be just setting a backup job for that server uh, from here, from web interface. And if I'm an MSP, a managed service provider, a T contractor, I think it's really cool uh, feature in this case because I don't need to be on my customer's premises all the time. I can just log in onto that uh, portal and set up a backup job for them, uh, run restore if I want to, and I can remotely monitor what, that, what is going on with my backups. If I'm uh, an admin at an organization, I can set up multiple backups for my uh, for my colleagues in different departments in different locations uh, around the globe. I can set up reporting and notifications for me as a, as an admin or reports for my end users if I want them to be notified. I can also do that. So many many bells and whistles that you can use. Uh, depending on your use case and your particular use case, whether you uh, protect and back up your own organization's uh, computers, your, you use it internally, or you, uh, you uh, leverage Cloudberry with Backblaze to your customers. So it's really easy to set up a storage again f uh, centrally for your uh, multiple servers, you go just to storage, storage accounts, and select Backblaze and provide your storage from uh, credentials from here. Again, Andy will tell you uh, what credentials you exactly need. And all your users, all your uh, computers in one place, you can easily monitor, you can easily set a backup for them, and uh, run it from uh, from that from that control panel. It's called managed backup as a service and it is storage agnostic, white labeled um, solution that you can use to grow your business if you're a managed service provider or or use it uh, for your advantage for uh, providing your own organization with um, simple and centralized backup solution. Let us go back to, okay, uh, I, th I think I will jump the gun here, but um, I see there are some questions on pricing, how many, uh, uh, what it's cost, uh, what the cost of the solution. Um, Andy will also um, uh, touch base on that. We need to uh, understand that Cloudberry and Backblaze are two different entities. They are two different companies. So when you use Backblaze, you, uh, you guys pay for storage, 
you pay for storage when you use Cloudberry, you pay for software licenses. Uh, Cloudberry uh, licenses are, we, we basically we, uh, Cloudberry sells, uh, Cloudberry sells software licenses and they are uh, per server or per desktop, uh, so each license is per desktop. Uh, depending on your case, whether you need a single uh, server solution or multiple server solution, the cost may be as uh, as low as $29 and it can even go less depending on the number of licenses you want. If you have one server uh, and you want to back up unlimited, unlimited uh, data uh, to backblaze, well, you need to consider data, actual data size, but to guarantee the unlimited data transfer uh, and, and additionally have an op option to back up your entire server on image level with SQL and Exchange database backup, uh, it will be twenty. Uh, uh, it will be two ninety nine dollars. So two ninety nine dollars for our ultimate enterprise edition. For simpler uh, server edition, it will be $120, or for just desktop, it's $29. So it's a single cost with no volume discounts. Uh, feel free to visit our uh, website uh, and look, cost uh, look up cost calculator, and you can easily calculate your cost. It's a perpetual one-time fee. If you're a service provider and if you're interested in centralized tools to manage your backups, uh, the cost is slightly different. Um, it's annual uh, and we provide really aggressive volume discounts, guys. So $49, it, it covers the entire server uh, and you can see that it's $49 a year. If we enter, let's say 10, you got 10 servers, you can see that it's $29. Uh, leave you a chance to play with it yourself. You can see that we can go even deeper if you want to cover more, if you want to serve more customers or if your organization is big enough with multiple desktops or servers, you can see that it's really low. Um, all right, thanks for, for watching this demo and this is a good time for Andy to Come into play. Hi, Andy, once again. Andy, can you hear us? Because we cannot. Okay. All right. Um, Serge, are you still there? Yep. We can hear you, Andy. You can you can start. How's that? Is that a little better? Yeah, we can. We all can hear you well. Ah, excellent, excellent. Thank you. Had a little trouble with my phone at this end, so uh, we're on the computer. So hopefully that'll hold up for us. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Serge. I appreciate uh, the opportunity to be part of this. And uh, why don't you uh, drive the slides for me and go to the next one. Um, and uh, we'll tell these people a little bit about V2. Um, as uh, Serge mentioned, uh, we came out at the end of uh, June. Uh, that's when 1.0 came out of V2. Um, some of you may already know this, but uh, we'll, we'll go over this and cover a few more things for you. Uh, the, uh, so what is V2, right? V2 is raw ob object storage. It'll store files, it'll store objects. We really don't care. Just let us have it and we'll put it in there. Um, it is ready access and restore, which means you put a file up there and you can restore it. You don't have near line delays, you don't have four hour delays, you don't have to put something in a queue and wait for us to hang a tape. Um, basically, you ask us to restore it, we restore it for you. Uh, it's, uh, it's that simple. Uh, you can have files up to 10 terabytes in size, a single file. Um, so uh, pretty cool there if you have some pretty big things that you want to do. Um, and uh, there's great documentation for all of this, um, and um, you, and it's all online, it's all free, you don't have to pay anything extra for it. Uh, Serge, why don't you go to the next slide, please? And because what you can do is um, you can use either the API, uh, there's a command line interface, or a web UI 
uh, in order to access the system. Um, so the documentation comes in handy regardless of which way you'd like to use it. Uh, Cloudberry obviously used the API and they went through and, uh, and built all of the calls in their products um, and their platform there. Um, and it's really cool all of the different things uh, that they have, uh, the services they do provide. So again, whether you're a PC desktop type of guy or you have a single lone server um, or you, you're running a farm. Uh, of servers as an MSP for different customers. Uh, all of those can be managed through the Cloudberry interface and then this data can be stored with B2. Uh, next slide, please. And so as Serge was mentioning, it's really straightforward. So if you don't already have a B2 account, um, you just go to backblaze.com, click on the cloud storage link, um, you'll go to the page, you can create a B2 account. It's, it takes you all of um, uh, about a minute to do that. You just need to have your account credentials. Once you're there, you'll see the web UI. This may be the only time you ever see the web UI, but um, uh, you'll need to get a couple of things there. Uh, one is uh, an account ID, and you'll see that on the overview page. The application key, and you may have to generate that the first time, but that's pretty simple. Um, there's a button that says generate application key. <laughs> Press that. Uh, and then you want to create one bucket. You can create more, certainly. Um, a bucket is just think of as a place to hold the files that you're going to have uh, the download to. Uh, and you can have more than one. Um, you create it with a name. You take all of those three pieces of information and then you go to Cloudberry. Um, and once you're at Cloudberry, uh, he's already walked you through the process there uh, uh, of doing this. But you go through, you open it up, and you put in the Backblaze credentials as you just had. Um, make sure um, you name it something you recognize. Um, it gives you the opportunity to have a nice display name. Um, I always uh, make sure that I can remember those types of things, especially if you're MSP. Maybe it's the name of the company. Uh, that you're storing the data for, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, really cool thing about all of this is uh, they actually have a trial. Uh, we will provide you with 10 gigabytes of data for free storage. So you can try this out uh, for literally absolutely nothing for a couple of weeks, um, you know, and see if it works for you, see if it stores the data, let it restore files, uh, and so on. When you're ready to get going, um, there's a nice helpful hint that we have. Uh, one of the things that we do is we package data in pretty big chunks. Um, and so what you need to do is make an adjustment to the Cloudberry system to increase the amount of RAM uh, that's dedicated for uploads. Um, you'll know if you start to upload a lot of data, you may notice the upload speed is kind of could be slow. Um, and so making this little adjustment will fix that right away. Uh, you can either go to the Cloudberry site um, or the Backblaze site, uh, the support site, um, and find the article on how to do that. It takes about three minutes, uh, but it is something extra outside of the UI uh, that you have to do on, this, on the given system uh, that's there in the Cloudberry system. You make that change uh, and uh, you won't have to worry about upload speeds or anything along those lines. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, great. There it is. Um, now, as Serge said, um, we're two separate companies. You pay us differently. Uh, with them, you either pay them, uh, like you said, uh, up front and then a maintenance fee, um, and, um, or perhaps you use the MBS service, uh, and the, if you use that, then you pay a subscription fee each year, so to speak. With us, you're just going to pay for how you work with the data. So we'll get to the exact prices in a little bit. Uh, but you're going to pay us for the data that you store, the data that you download, and so on and so forth. Uh, a couple of nice things um, about, uh, about the Backblaze that are kind of nice versus some of the other things out there. Uh, we don't charge if you need to delete files. Um, for example, uh, some of the other services, if you need to delete a file in the first 30, 90, 60 days, some other uh, odd number, you have to pay extra. We don't care. Um, we also keep lots of different versions of things if that's what you want to do um, uh, in the system as well. Um, the other nice thing about the joint solution is, is that the encryption that Cloudberry uh, uh, does, and, and Serge put up that one slide with the little triangle that showed how the different things flow. 
the data is encrypted on your server and sent to us encrypted and stored encrypted and then returned to you in exactly the opposite way. So at no time during the process from your server to and from um, is that data in the clear, um, uh, which is really, really nice. Um, it's, it's the right way to do it. Um, so you can be assured that the data will be protected. And as he said, you have a, a number of different algorithms to choose from. Uh, pick your favorite. Uh, why don't we go to the next slide there? So you're all sitting there going, okay, so what does this cost? So Surge was going in and Danny told you a little bit about uh, what it cost for uh, the system, his side of the thing. For us, um, it's very inexpensive to store data, a half a penny a gigabyte a month. Okay, there are no tiers. You don't have to earn that. You don't have to be a super customer. You don't have to be back, have Backblaze Prime or anything like that. Um, all you need to do is store data with us, and that's what we'll charge you. Um, and uh, it's always going to be that number. There's no regional differences, um, whether you're in Virginia or whether you're in California or Alaska. Uh, that's the price: a half a penny a gig a month nice and easy to predict how much your storage costs are going to be. Oh, and by the way, the first 10 gigabits is free. Uh, uploads are free. We don't charge you to give us data. Um, there are no transaction fees. Uh, there is no whatever else somebody else might charge you for that. It's free. Uh, when you go to download your data, uh, we charge a very competitive rate of a, a, a nickel, a gigabyte, uh, to download your data. Um, and each day uh, you get one gigabyte free of downloading your data. So you could potentially be downloading data all month long and never have to pay for downloads. Uh, there are some minimal transaction fees. Um, I've listed them there. I'm not going to go through what's in the different classes, uh, class A and free ones, for example, uploading your data. Um, they're very, very trivial in cost. Um, the only time they ever come into play is if you are writing uh, an API to us and you did it wrong. Um, and the nice part about all of that is if you happen to, for example, do a file lookup every single time you go to upload a single file, uh, even though you don't need to do that, um, and we start to charge you for that, uh, you can actually set limits on those transactions so you can make sure uh, you never get yourself in, and spend more than you expect. Um, you can see the, there the cost versus all of the competitors. These are current prices. Um, for those of you not getting uh, 2.8 cents uh, from Amazon S3, it's probably because you haven't earned that yet. You have to get to a certain tier to do that. I think uh, it's a petabyte or something like that of data. Again, we don't charge any of those things. Um, why don't you next, go to the next slide, please. I mentioned caps and alerts for the transactions. Right? They are caps and alerts that you can set up uh, for uh, various things. How much am I going to pay for my storage? Uh, how much bandwidth I might use in, in downloading things? And then the two different transaction types. And on our website, we list all of the different uh, transactions by class. So you can go there. Uh, we're very upfront about it. We say these are class B transactions, these are class A, and so on and so forth. Um, but you can set limits. Uh, you can set triggers, whether they're emails or uh, texts to your phone uh, at 75% and 100, so you'll never be surprised when something's happening. Uh, that's, we don't want you to do that. We want you to be able to sit down and write uh, and predict what it's going to cost you uh, to do your job and store data with us. It's that simple. Um, next slide. So oh, you're already there. Um, if you're curious, you, you can go in and on our website. Uh, you can see the URL there, but there's on the pricing page, uh, there's a cost calculator. So you can go in and estimate that. A uh, couple of little things. You put in the initial amount of data you expect to upload. So in this case, it's uh, a, ter a terabyte, right? <laughs> Can't do the conversion fast enough. Um, you put that in, and then uh, below that, you just enter the numbers for the amount of data that you think you might be uploading and downloading each month. Okay, so in this case, uh, we're going to upload uh, 100 gig new each month, so additional data. Um, then we're going to delete maybe 5 gig of data. Delete is what? It's a subtraction. We don't charge you for that. You can see that on the other side. Uh, and then how much data do you think you might download? 
Uh, we don't factor in any of the free space, any of the free things. So we don't factor in the 10 gigabits free or the 1 gigabit a day um, because those are bonus. It's always better when the bill is smaller than you expect, right? Um, and then you put in the period of time uh, down at the bottom and we'll tell you what it's going to cost you for that, in this case, 12 months. So over 12 months, those numbers, it's going to cost you a little over $100. And We'll also show you the same same service uh, in the other services out there. So if you would like to use Microsoft Azure, um, then you need to pay them about four times as much for the same service uh, and so on. So um, as you're weighing uh, the different services that are available to you out there and how you want to use them, you can decide how much we're going to charge you and whether it's worth it. Um, you may have some instances, as Serge said, where you need to use some of those other ones. For example, you might have um, some, uh, you know, some service, some uh, web services or whatever with Amazon, um, and you need to have your data with them as well. Great, we understand. Uh, maybe you need a backup copy of that data with, with Backblaze, uh, and you certainly can store it a whole lot cheaper than you can at Amazon. A couple of examples um, I wanted to just kind of give you of people who have used this uh, solution. Uh, we got this one here. Um, I, a long time ago in another, another world, I was a, an IT guy and I used to do tape backups, okay? And, um, and I remember the process very well of making sure I put the tapes in every day, uh, labeling everything and all of that, and, uh, and then making sure I pulled them out and then going through the process of making sure that I cleaned the machine and then every so often uh, putting them in a can and sending them away and they come back and so on and so forth. And it was a wonderful process. Um, and it took me lots of time each day. Uh, and then I would spend time also going through and, um, and, having, and bringing tapes back and reading them whenever anybody needed them and crossing my fingers that I could actually read the tape um, because occasionally that didn't happen and so on. So one of the things you, you can do um, is uh, is not replace your tape backup system. I'm not sure we can do, you can do that right away. But maybe we have this example here where somebody actually replaced their daily incrementals. So what they did is they used B2 instead of the daily incrementals. They still did their weeklies and monthlies and yearlies um, on tape, although over time those will what? Go away um, uh, because they won't need to do them. Um, but they basically just uh, created a Cloudberry backup plan uh, to back up their daily information instead of uh, to an LTO device uh, to B2. Um, and they were able to get their data back in minutes on a daily one, right? They just logged into Cloudberry and said, I need this file back, and they could get it back. Um, it was really, really kind of nice. Um, they, uh, they didn't have a whole lot of data, but about a terabyte of new data each month they were generating. Uh, it was coming up in chunks, and it was great. Of course, we never deleted anything. Um, they were downloading about 10 gig or thereabouts a month. Um, so uh, you can put up the next slide there. Um, you can see what it cost them, right? For the year, right, the whole process cost them about 300, almost about $400 uh, to do that. So with all of that, they had replaced uh, getting these files off site. Um, they had managed to improve the service to their clients because they could now get the files back within minutes instead of having to go, one, locate the tape, uh, two, cross their fingers, three, they didn't have to maintain it nearly as much, and four, over time, they could begin to replace that entire LTO system. It just takes time, and, and you got a lot of history there, so uh, you just have to be careful about doing that. Uh, there was another example that we just came across where somebody was an accounting firm, um, they uh, they were outsourcing they were outsourcing their backup of their servers. Um, the company was going to be charging them about a hundred dollars a month to do this. Uh, they thought that was a little bit high because they only had about three hundred gig of data uh, that they were backing up. Um, so they looked into uh, the Cloudberry solution and the Backblaze B two solution. Uh, they bought a, a copy of uh, the pro of the Windows Server backup product for $119, I believe, uh, and and then they hooked it up to B2, um, and they ended up saving themselves nearly $1,000 a year. They were going to spend about $1,200, $1,300 a year. They were going they spent a little over $150 the first year uh, to do it. 
uh, because the storage cost was so insignificant. Uh, they got they really liked the Cloudberry backup product because it was so easy to set up and use. Uh, they were up and running uh, in a couple of uh, in a couple of hours uh, and backing things up. They were able to restore files instantly, um, and they saved themselves uh, a bundle of money. All right. So next slide, please. All right. So. Uh, these are some of the benefits, right, of, of all of the different things. Um, you can kind of get a sense of where we go with this, right? We want to make this whole thing easy. Uh, that's what it's all about, um, and, it, and it can be expensive too. And adding the two solutions together to that, uh, Cloudberry solution is a, you know, is fully functional, has lots of different platforms they support in there. You could build a really nice uh, page. Uh, he showed you that page where you can manage all your different systems, uh, whether it's one server um, or whether it's, you know, uh, again, a whole farm of them. Um, and uh, next slide, please. And, and then you store the data very, very economically um, in there. Um, obviously, we have a great deal of support for all of that um, uh, from the community out there. Um, when we first launched B2 at the end of June, a lot of excited folks. Uh, we have, uh, I believe, something on the order of 30 some odd thousand people already signed up uh, for it, um, and that's growing every day. So um, it, I think it's a pretty good solution. If you're already a B2 customer, great. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, uh, go give it a try. Uh, next slide, please. So I'll, uh, I'll let Serge sum it all up, but um, uh, I'm sure we'll have some questions at the end, and uh, we'll take it from there. Thanks, Andy. Uh, it was really great, really great overview. Um, well, uh, before we get to Q and A, uh, let's just sum sum it up. Uh, it's obviously that super cheap and super cost effect of storage uh, is Backblaze. Backblaze uh, provides you with support from their side so if something is needed if some some assistant is needed uh, with the storage with uh, calculating storage costs with the calculating um, sp your speed of initial upload for example uh, backblitz team uh, will be happy to pitch in and um, assist you with that if you need any assistance with the initial setup of cloudberry uh, software on your servers uh, feel free to touch base with us and we'll be happy to assist you um, so if you have one server if you have multiple servers farm of servers if you're service providers or you're just your organization just ha so happen to have multiple machines uh, on premises you can protect all of them you can protect your customers you can protect your organization if you're if you're a T guy or if you are CEO and you don't even have uh, a T staff uh, at your company it is all so easy to set up and so easy to manage alone uh, so I don't know uh, any can manage that just sign up we can provide you with uh, personalized personalized demo if you want to just uh, shoot us an email at uh, sales at callberlab.com. I will show you this contact details a bit um, just in a sec. We will discuss particularities of your use case. Uh, we can get uh, Backblaze people on the call and discuss the specifics of data upload for your use case. And let's take it from there. Feel All right, free. Serge, thanks. Yeah. Um, I got a couple of questions that have been uh, that uh, have been sent over to me by Eugene. Uh, so let me just kind of address those, and then I'm sure there's some other ones in there that he has for you, and he can answer. Uh, first one, somebody asked a little bit about the benefits versus S3. Good question. Um, certainly, there is the cost benefit uh, of uh, saving a fair amount of money. Uh, the service is generally on par from a performance point of view. Uh, to S3, we also have an SLA uh, that's actually a little bit better uh, than theirs. Uh, uh, it's actually much better than Glacier because Glacier doesn't have one. Um, so uh, you, you get uh, you get those kind of benefits. It's also just a little easier to use. We um, 
the API in particular is a little more straightforward. Uh, they have lots of different cases where they have to deal with things that uh, we don't. Um, and it's just because they've gotten big over the years and, uh, and so on. Um, now, some of the things that they do, uh, they do well. Um, they certainly have data centers all around the globe. Um, uh, and so uh, if that's important to you, that's great. Um, and we understand. What you may find is, is you want to use S3 as your primary storage um, and then use us as a backup. Um, because we'll save you a bunch of money on that second copy, which they can't. So, for example, you may back up in Virginia uh, and then back up uh, with us out here in California and have it two different geos and save yourself about 75% on that second geo. Um, so uh, it is it is not and it is not only price, but there is an ease of use that we uh, have if you use the product uh, as well. Um, the second thing that came up, somebody asked about being uh, HIPAA, uh, HIPAA compliant, um, or more appropriately, uh, HIPAA compliant. So, because the data is encrypted um, in uh, by the CloudBerry application on your system, transferred and encrypted, stored encrypted, and again the product is reversed, uh, we meet that statute there. Um, our data center is what's known as. Um, as uh, SAS, uh, SA, SSAE 16 SOC 2 compliant, uh, which is also a set of uh, regulations which uh, help uh, have HIPAA, um, HIPAA uh, wants you to have as well. Now, um, have we gone out and had someone do a HIPAA compliance uh, audit? No, we have not. Um, so the answer is, is um, you know, so we do all of the things that are appropriate. Uh, the data is certainly stored securely. Uh, we the data center is protected, uh, but we haven't had the certification yet. Um, the uh, the other one, let's see. Um, somebody asked about so do we charge uh, uh, for each gigabyte? And then there are transactions as well. Yes, when you download data, there are some transactions. For example, looking up the files, that's a transaction call. Uh, and again, the first 2,500 of those are free. Um, and if you're worried about that at all, uh, put a limit on it, test it out, make sure we don't hit the limits. Uh, I use B2 for, for example, downloading the data sets that we do for our hard drive stats. and um, and I've never actually ever hit one of those limits. I've, those are ends up being uh, pennies a day, even though we get thousands of downloads um, uh, on a, sometime on a, on a given day. So, uh, but try it out. Put a limit in there, and uh, make sure that we stay underneath it. Also, pay attention to your best practices in coding. Uh, we have seen some people who, uh, like I said, do things like do a file lookup, a file list lookup every time they go to download a file. Um, and you don't need to do that. Um, so <laughs> um, those are the kinds of things uh, that we have. Uh, Serge, I'm sure there's some questions for you, um, so I'll let you uh, uh, take, uh, take them from here. Sure, thanks. I would just add on HIPAA compliance. Um, well, services itself, services themselves, actually can, um, cannot be compliant, but you can use them to be compliant yourself. So if your organization requires that, uh, you can use, for example, CloudBerry uh, algorithms of encryption to provide your organization be HIPAA compliant. Well, just my uh, couple of sounds uh, to that. Um, Nick uh, Bambridge is asking if we, if we can use uh, CloudBerry with different storage uh, uh, types at the same time. Uh, in particular, he's asking about Backblaze B2 in Azure. And then the answer is yes for advanced redundancy, for example. You can uh, set up two uh, backup destination. Um, and Andy uh, already covered that. Uh, Sometimes it may be required for some organizations, and it's a really good feature that you can uh, do that. You can set up multiple backups at the same time. Okay. Um, let me just pick uh, another question that I see uh, Eugene replied many of them, almost all of them, so I'll just pick the most interesting and relevant. By the way, guys, this uh, webinar has been 
recorded so we will follow up on this uh, and we'll shoot you the recorded version no worries about that well there also have been a couple of questions about that if it's being recorded all right uh, other questions on support on uh, cost on um, have been uh, answered. Well, thank you very much. Uh, we will get through all uh, other questions that uh, might have been not covered, or uh, you can feel free. Uh, you, you you may be feel free to uh, shoot us emails at sales at cloudberrylab.com or sales contact at backblaze.com. Uh, we can set up personalized demo for your organizations, uh, discuss your use case, and point you to the right solution. It's been a real pleasure uh, hosting this webinar for you. Uh, Andy, thank you very much. Eugene, thank you for uh, assisting all of us today. It's been really great. Um, any questions, feel free to shoot us uh, at sales at cloudberrylab.com and sales contact at backblaze.com. Thank you very much once again and see you next time.